course. Um, before I begin, I just we're going to say a prayer. So those who are able, please kneel. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you at this time in humbleness and asking that you please, Lord, be with us. We ask for your presence and your spirit to be in the midst as well as your Holy Spirit to enlighten us with understanding. For the information that you are going to teach us now, we ask that you please help us to have open minds and hearts to receive this information. And please speak through me, and I pray that um, all the words that come out of my mouth may only glorify your name and your name only. And thank you for this opportunity to be able to be among the living and to be able to share um, the gospel message through health. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about dragon fruit. And has anyone ever had dragon fruit before? No. Okay, there's quite a few. Um, okay, so today we're going to not only know um, what, what plant it comes from, but also its health benefits. And pray for me, because hope, prayerfully we will be able to connect this to His Word. Because I believe that um, God make God makes no mistakes, and so um, the Lord also encourages encourages us to learn of nature. So, all right. So this is the dragon fruit, um, other known as pitaya, or and it is originally native to Mexico and and South and Central America. Even though it's mostly, it seems common in the Asian countries, that's because in the 19th century, the French brought the dragon fruit to Asia. Wow. Yes, and so it goes by a couple of names, such as the strawberry pear in Asia and the pitaya, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, um, um, in Central America, Central and yes, South America. And so it is widely grown in subtropical regions, and of the Southeast Asia, USA, the Caribbean, Australia. It's widely grown all over the world. And um, you can also grow it in your greenhouse, but since it's not in its natural environment, don't expect it to grow as large and as fast as it would in the tropical regions. And the fruit is actually grown on the Hylocereus Hy 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 cacti, and it's called the climbing cacti, and it's a cacti that bears white and pink flowers that tend to bloom at night and closes up during the day. Um, so it brightens its, yeah, so um, it's also called the orchid cactus, and yes, it is very beautiful. It's, it goes by a couple names such as the queen, flower, queen of the night or the moon flower. And so it only blooms in the night for about, for about eight hours. It only, the flower only blooms at night uh, for about eight hours. Yes, so it's very unique. Um, there's a closer shot of it. So there are several varieties of dragon fruit varying in skin, color, texture, and flesh. And um, for example, um, the red one has same colored skin, but inside it's red. And this one we have we have a white um, version. And then there's also a yellow version as well. Um, dragon fruit is juicy with a slight sweet sweet taste, and that is described as a cross between a kiwi and a pear, and sometimes maybe a watermelon. And the seeds have a nutty flavor. And so this dragon fruit is high in ly lysopene, which can lower risks of heart disease and cancer. And it is also high in vitamin C, fiber, and antioxidants. And we'll talk a little bit more about lipos uh, lysopene a little bit later. But the dragon fruit is a low calorie fruit, high in fiber, and provides a good amount of several minerals and vitamins, such as magnesium, which is nutrient de dense, uh, iron and calcium. And iron actually is important because it helps move oxygen in your body and helps provide energy as well. 
and it contains vitamin A and vitamin C. And vitamin C is good for the immune system and it actually helps boost, um, it helps the body use that iron. And it provides several antioxidants such as flavonoids and flavonoids are just l a large diverse group of antioxidants which is um, linked to better brain health and reduced heart disease. Hydro hydroxycinamate study shows that this group of compounds has demonstrated anti-cancer activity. It's very interesting. Um, and also provides probiotics. These antioc antioxidants and more help protect your cells from free radicals, which are unstable molecules that cause damage, which are linked to chronic disease, cancer, and premature aging. And so having more, pri pre sorry, having more probiotics can improve the balance of good to bad bacteria in your system. And so if, uh, none of you really know, but there is good, also good bacteria and bad bacteria. And good bacteria helps break down uh, food in your digestive system. And um, lactobacilli is a helpful bacteria as well as the bifidobacteria, which can kill disease-causing viruses um, and bacteria and, like I said, can help digest food. And so the combinations of these compounds can have amazing effects on the free radicals that can produce cancer. And betalanes and carotenoids are other antioxidants that can fight oxidative stress and cancer cells. So dragon fruit helps with a lot of things, but just to summarize it, it helps lower cholesterol, lower blood sugar, it aids in providing insulin for those who are diabetic. It relieves arthritis, such as reducing irritation and swelling of the joints. And it boosts brain health and keeps inflammation at bay, like I said earlier. Okay. So, let's see. Oh, there's that. Um, but you can partake of this fruit in m various ways. You can put it in a smoothie, or you could just eat it raw, just like that. Or you can add it to granola. And um, I'm just going to switch over really quick to, you can add it to your fruit salad. And over here is actually dragon fruit powder, which is, you can add it to your smoothies too, or you can add it in uh, like a cup of yogurt or add it to your cereals or granolas. Yeah. And um, we're going to do, I'm going to do a recipe for you guys right now and kind of demonstrate how to cut the dragon fruit. So I already have it pre-cut here, but what are you going to do? So, um, the thing about these dragon fruits is that when we buy from the store, they obviously are cutting, um, they obviously are shipping it to us unripe. And so over time, um, the color outside will change, and, um, but the flavor inside will kind of not change. So when you grow it yourself, there's much more flavor to it because there are a lot of comments that um, it tastes bland and it's not that sweet, but and that's the reason why is because when you buy from the stores, you know, we're getting half of, well, not half of the benefits, but like half of the quality and taste, yes. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to show you. So what you do is you, you can cut it in half, like so. Wow. It's really pretty. has that nice color. And, oh, sorry. <laughs> Here it is. And what you could do is, it's very easy to cut because it's soft. You can either just peel it off like that. Okay. <laughs> or you could use your spoon to, s like, just eat out from, from, from it, like a bowl. See, like so. Like that. See, it's very soft and tender, so don't be too harsh on it now. <laughs> it's gone through a lot anyways. <laughs> um, the skin, so comments varies online as well about um, digesting the skin. But so it's really up to you and your research. But what you can do is dehydrate the skin and turn it into powder 
or you could kind of dry it and eat it like a, a dried fruit snack. If that makes sense, yeah. And so, let's see. Is it safe to blend the skin? I believe so. You can try it if you like. I can give you the skin afterwards. Okay, so I'm going to make a uh, kind of like a slush lemonade. And let's see. So my ingredients are ginger syrup, which is just simply ginger and sweetener of your choice and kind of uh, bringing it to um, a simmer and also lemon juice. Okay, so what you're gonna do? Say, no, lemon juice is just ingredient to add in here. So first thing I'm gonna do is actually get my ice. Yeah, so you can make a smoothie out of this, but I'm gonna do slushy lemonade. I think it'd be perfect since summer has come right around the corner. So. For those who want to try this recipe out, you can write this recipe down. It's adding a half cup of ice, and I'm like um, doubling it because, you know, I have this group of people. Everyone wants to try some, so no one left behind. Um, so half, about half cup or a cup of ice. Then you take one and a half cups of the dragon fruit, and Recipes are just for guidance. So as I give you this recipe, you blend it up yourself and then you taste it. And then if you want to add more sweet, go ahead and do that. If you want to add more of the dragon fruit flavor, go ahead and do that as well. Okay. So, so, let's see. so I'm going to take my lemon juice. Yes. How much? Okay, so fresh squeezed lemon, add about fourth cup. One fourth cup. And then your ginger syrup, which you can make at home or you can actually purchase it at your health food store. I'm gonna do two tablespoons. Or two tablespoons. Okay. And um, so with the ginger syrup, you can add about a tablespoon actually let's do a teaspoon and then from there you can add on okay that's it I'm gonna turn this on you already have water in here hence the ice okay yeah it's very easy and I'm just going to try it first before I deliver. <laughs> and the consistency is I could uh, the of the um, dragon fruit as you blend it is more so like kind of like aloe vera, so it could, it's like a little bit slimy, but don't be scared, okay? <laughs> yes, the the seeds remind me of chia pudding. Okay. Not bad. <laughs> so I'm gonna have y'all try it. Oh. I'm gonna add a little bit more ice to liquefy. Ginger syrup is just gonna add that nice sweetness, but also that kick. Probably. Oh, no, it's more of a slushy. Okay. So here's that powder. Um, mic? Does anyone have a mic or? My question is, how do we use the dragon fruit powder? 
So you can actually add it into your smoothies or add it to your yogurt, sprinkle it over your yogurt, your yogurt or fruit salad. It's really up to you, but it's very versatile. So y'all can come up and taste your slushies, unless nobody wants any. <laughs> Go ahead, take them. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Go ahead. Yeah. You're welcome. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. How is it? Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, can you grab that, Kobe? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Go ahead, Kobe. Take that for now. I was just wondering where you bought the dragon fruit here. Uh, you can find it at an Asian store, a local Asian store. Like which in is Jackson? Like Memphis. Memphis. Or Nashville. Walmart too. I found at Walmart. Oh, or Walmart. Really? Okay. Lexington. Oh, so you find it at Arizona Walmart? No. Walmart in Arizona? Oh, yeah. See, it can be grown here in the U.S. And that's flower you were talking about? Uh-huh. Wait, sorry. Can you speak in the mic so they can hear you? I said that flower you were talking mm -hmm. about, the flowers? I said wake up, set my alarm to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning, mm. and then if you get it before the sun comes out, uh-huh. It will last all day in the house. Mm. Yeah, and it was really big and beautiful, but if the sun hits it, it turns black. Is it a fragrant Where's your mic? Please. No. Okay. I have a question. 
question about the flower. So is it a fragrant scent like the uh, fruit or? No, no, no. It, it, there was no scent to it, but it was just beautiful. It was as big as my head. <laughs> yes. It actually tastes better. Auntie. White. How is White and pink. Sister Cobb. Okay, Sister Cobb, do you know where on, where were you How when you people? when you got the flower? Oh. Arizona. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Best for last. Oh. She said that's good. Uh -huh. I'm glad you guys like it. Oh, Ask your husband if he has any comment. Brother Mario? Okay. You're welcome. Hello? No, just for show and tell purposes. But you could add that to this. Is it red? Yes. Well, yes, it is. So when it, when it does that, does it make it? Um, it makes it red. Yeah. I'll talk more about that red color. You're welcome. You're welcome. Whoa. Bethel, I have a question awesome. over here on the side. One moment, please. Okay. <laughs> okay. Gracias. There you go. Okay. Jesse. So this is in the same family as prickly pear. Do they have a similar taste or? To be honest, I've never had a prickly pear, but they are grown on cactus plants. So, you want to add to it, Brother Mario? Yes, they do have a similar taste. Um, there are over 100 different varieties, even though the color might be look the same. The yellow one has spikes on the outside, and there's a technique how to remove the spikes before picking them. Yeah. And the tree actually, you have to know to put uh, like a tire and maybe a four by four or something tenor where they can grow up to the side in a certain height. It produces the fruit when it creates a stress on the tree. When it hangs over like this, then it helps it produce the fruit. Is this a teacher Thank you. question? Did you, I didn't hear very clear. Did you say it has lycopene? Yeah. Uh, yes. I have some, if y'all want to try the, oh. I have one more thing. So I made a smoothie out of it, and I don't know. You guys want to try it? See how it tastes like? That's not enough. The Lord will stretch. That's for one person. No, it's not. <laughs> it's, it's. So this is um, same fruit. I added uh, Marion berries and mango and some uh, plant milk. Just a little taste. Oh, sorry. Really? Wow. This is my first Yes, and banana. What? <laughs> Please tell them save it for home. Two smoothie and I think one. One for Okay. 
Too smoothie. Sorry, I spilled on your finger. And then one slush. You said. Okay. Oh. You're welcome. Alrighty. <laughs> Oh, that's a good question. Sure, go ahead. Mm, yeah, so so see how here the um, these leafy parts are getting brown at the edges? That's how you know it's ripe. And when it's got its full color. Brother Mario, any add? Okay. Do you grow in the Caribbean? Yes. Oh, nice. Okay, so to continue on, um, this fruit, specifically, especially the uh, red dragon fruit, with the one with the red flesh inside, has lycopene, which is an antioxidant. Mm -hmm. And it is a phytochemical that gives tomatoes, watermelon, guava, dragon fruit, apricots their red color. And their red pinkish color. And it can also be found in some veggies. So... It, the lycopene is a member of the carotenoid family of antioxidants, which also include barocarotene and lutein and astaxanthin. But unlike its family members, lycopene cannot turn into vitamin A. Mm -hmm. And studies have found out that men who consume the highest amount of lycopene have a much lower risk of developing prostate cancer. And research has shown that there are several mechanisms by which lycopene protects the prostate as a potent fa fat-soluble antioxidant. And so lycopene concentrates, is very concentrated in the cell membrane uh, where it protects the cell from oxidative damage caused by free radicals. And it's important because the cell membrane actually protects the cells from toxins and cells from toxins while allowing nutrients into the cell and waste products out. So what, what a mechanism that God has created within our bodies, amen. And I apologize for not having a visual, but um, I'm going to take you back to biology class or uh, chemistry class and kind of re-explain that. Um, so the cell is like a little ball, right? But within the cell, there's a powerhouse. But for the cell to protect that powerhouse, it has um, a protein layer that called cell membrane. And that cell membrane, it's, it's, like, um, it's like a safeguard where it kind of scans the proteins that are coming in and out. So there's only certain ones that can come in and out. And those that cannot come out will actually uh, be like, eh, can't come in. So they'll return. They can't even go inside. You know, it's like access denied. And so the, ly the, the lysopene actually helps, pr helps, um, helps that barrier to become stronger and defend um, the cell itself from those free radicals. Yeah. I hope that was self-explanatory. Uh, I have a question, please. I just have a comment. You named at least four properties of the only five that are in um, the recommendation for people who have macular degeneration for their eyes, mm. four of those properties mm -hmm. of the five of the properties that they suggest are in this fruit. Yes, yes. So even though um, this fruit may not be as, may not have as much antioxidants, the, the key ones that are in here are super powerful. And um, yes, it is also good for the skin and for the hair and the eyes. Yeah. Um, so when the membrane is damaged, 
these crucial functions are inhibited and the cell can become toxic and eventually lead to cancer. So without that safeguard of the membrane, you know, imagine what will happen to our bodies within. And, um, you know, kind of like that phrase, it's the small things that count. And we don't realize that, but when we, you know, um, apply it to God's word and apply it to the the bodily functions, it's super important and it's really very much needed. So lysopene also supports, uh, sorry, lysopene also dramatically slows down the growth of cancer cells by inhibiting the cancer cells ability to grow new blood vessels to feed tumors, a process known as amogenesis where new blood vessels are created by old damaged vessels and cancer cells can hijack that process. And recent researchers have also revealed that lyso lysopene also positively affects the hormone pathways which influences prostate health. It's, I believe it's been mentioned before in Dr. Jackson's previous videos, so you could go ahead and find that and look more into the topic of prostate health. But getting back into this, all prostate cells are very sensitive to the effects of the hormones, such as testosterone and dihydrotestosterone, known as the androgens. And these are hor hormones that stimulate the growth of prostate cells. And lysopene helps to regulate, helps to down-regulate the effect of these hormones, the, that these hormones have on the prostate. Uh, prostate cancer cells. So this is a very, very powerful fruit. And um, the scripture verse uh, for this evening is actually found in Ephesians 4, verse 29. Ephesians 4, verse 29. And um, as you go there, I also want to note that Lysopene also supports communication between cells. And it is believed that when communication breaks down, be down between the cells, diseases like cancer can emerge and arise. So take that, take that statement for a moment and think about it. When, think about it, how the lysopene supports communication between cells, but when there is no communication between the cells, it is believed that um, cancer and diseases, chronic diseases, can emerge. Ephesians 4, verse 29, Lord, please bless your word. In Jesus' name, amen. It says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Now, we can go on and on about the topic of communication and how it is very important in not only the day-to-day -day basis of relationships between you and I, but especially God, right? And when we talk about communication to, to God, um, when we talk about communication with God, he has provided for us um, to commune with him not only through prayer, but he has given us his word, amen? amen. And in, I'm sorry, in Proverbs, it says, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. So even through music and um, through hymns, he, has, he is also speaking through us, to us, encouraging us each and every day. Um, but the main point that I wanted to get out is that taken from this object lesson, we see that it's very important to communicate even between us us and you. For example, a marriage, communication is vital, right? And the Lord often ref, uh, refers to the example of marriage um, as a relationship we are to have with him. And without that communication, all is lost. And let me go to this um, scripture real quick. In 1 Samuel 12 verse 7 it says now therefore stand still that i may reason with you before the lord of all the righteous acts of the lord which he did to you and to your fathers reason means to discourse to talk to take or give an account it was because of it is because of sin that the lord was disconnected from his children from man and so it is it is um the lord's will to continually restore that communication with us. And by his grace, when we reach that heavenly day, um, 
that goal will be met. Amen. Amen. And um, I just want to encourage you. And also some facts is not by research, but by experience is that even with the vibrations and the frequencies of your demeanor, how you carry yourself, she plays a huge role. And they may, like I said, they may seem like small, um, simple things, but it plays a big role, especially when it comes to cooking food. Um, for example, I am a servant in the cafeteria, and um, the, the motto of having a prayerful spirit and having a humble spirit is really pushed on in there, especially, and it's the, the key thing is always to never cook when you're upset or never cook when you're frustrated because you don't realize that those frequencies are actually going into the food. And um, imagine the consumer will be eating the food and what then, you know? And it kind of reminds me of when the animals are brought to the slaughter, they know exactly what's going on. And imagine all their hormones are, you know, combusting together. And, and then once they kill the animal, you grill your meat, then what? All your hormones are messed up. And now you have become what you ate, you know? Uh, you are what you eat. So, um, and um, yes, it's very powerful. Uh, like I said, it could be spoken more further on, but I just want to encourage you that communication, not only through the Lord, to the Lord is very important. He wants us to seek him every day, but also the simple communication of between each other, whether it be in the work field or be in the family environment. Um, it all plays a huge role and uh, plays a huge part. Because my thing is, if you cannot master the task of simple communication to someone, then how can you, how, the, how then can the Lord give you something bigger to deal with? Um, which refers, which were, amen, which refers back to um, faithfulness, which is what we, which was, sorry, which was the topic of God's name last month. And it reminds me of the story, Elisha, where, um, he was chosen because he was faithful in the least of things. And so I pray that you guys will carry that with you throughout the week. And um, uh, also another tip I wanted to give you is that tomatoes are by far the best food source of ly lycopene. And when tomatoes are cooked like marinara sauce, the lycopene is significantly, significantly increased that the body can absorb it well. So for example, y'all had lasagna today. So there you go, taste and see. <laughs> and um, another great way to consume lycopene is through watermelon. And um, here's another reason to eat watermelon is because you don't have to cook it like, uh, like you don't have to cook it down like tomatoes, but um, watermelon has high amount of lyco lysopene. And uh, yes. Yes, deeds and all. Amen. So, um, I will, um, if there's any other questions, nothing, okay, or comments. It's just the, the whole watermelon, uh, outside too, or just the red part of it? Um, I'm talking about the red part. The red part. Yeah. Is the lycopene in it? Yes. What about the seedless? It doesn't make a difference. Seed or seedless? Uh, it does make a huge difference because with uh, fruits that have seed in, it, seed in them, it means that it contains more nutrients than the seed less. Okay. So God made fruit with seeds. With you seeds. know, so if you were to partake of a seedless fruit, like a grape, then you got some man-made type stuff over there. Amen. Yeah. Go ahead, Brother Mario. Or Brother Mario had a question or a comment? The watermelon, uh, what about eating the seeds? Yeah. The seeds has a lot of something that is very good for the prostrate glands as well, mm -hmm. just like the pumpkin seeds. So mm. in Asia, now we eat watermelon down here, but in Asia, they don't eat much watermelons. They more go for the seeds. Amazing. Mm. Thank you for that. Brother Rolando, did you have something? Be a last comment for the night. So the dragon fruit, does it come, like when you go to the store, does it come in like a bundle or just, like is it per fruit since it's so big? 
Mm -hmm. Yes, it's per fruit. It. Okay, per fruit. Yeah, and you can buy it frozen, but like I mentioned earlier, if you farm it yourself, it's bet you get better results. Gotcha. You know, taste wise. Thank so, you. if that's all, I'm gonna say a word of prayer, and I'm just gonna kneel. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you once again. Thank you for thanking you for the um, success of this health nugget. By your grace, I know that you brought me through, and we thank you for teaching us through your word and through the through the example of this fruit that we are to be faithful, um, not only in the least of things, but we are to communicate with you as well. And we ask that you please continue to guide us, guide us through our night. We thank you for the Sabbath day that. Um, Hazard is coming to an end, and we give you all the honor and praise um, for we are able, we are alive and among the living. Thank you, Lord. Please guide our week and bring us back again next next Sabbath, so that we may fellowship with you and one another. In Jesus' name, Amen. amen. Okay. So, before we leave, um, 